What's up everyone, I'm back and I'm proud to present the big one you've all been waiting for. This is the definitive, ultimate, complete film study on Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. I hope you all enjoy the video and learn a few things in the process. With that said, kick back, relax, and enjoy watching the techniques of boxing's first and only 8th Division world champ. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is Manny Pacquiao's straight left hand. Pacquiao's straight left hand is the weapon he is most known for and is arguably his most effective punch. Aside from the obvious speed and power associated with his left hand, I'm actually going to show you the various tricks and techniques he uses to set up this punch. Gives up his... They're simple. They'll always... Uh, but it, uh... The speed and variety... Does it not? Yes, it does. So he has a better chance to affect... All the examples I've just shown is of Manny splitting the jab of his orthodox opponents. The straight left hand from the southpaw works well as a counter to the orthodox jab due to the angle it comes from. By slipping the orthodox jab to the outside and simultaneously shooting the straight left hand, Pacquiao essentially makes his orthodox opponents punch themselves. This combined with stepping over to the right, his opponents cannot return fire and he remains defensively responsible. So here we see Manny pressure forward, baiting the jab from Marquez. At the slightest movement from Marquez, Pacquiao anticipates the jab and slips it to the outside while throwing his left hand. And down goes Marquez. Essentially, since Marquez is jumping into the straight left hand, the power of that left hand is doubled. Here we see Manny split Oscar De La Hoya's lazy jab and step over to his right. As stated before, Pacquiao splits the jab of his orthodox opponents and maintains his defensive responsibility by stepping over to his right. He understands that in a high level of boxing there will be return fire, so this forces his opponents to turn before they are able to punch. He essentially comes in from one angle and exits at a different angle. Beautiful boxing. The speed and variety. Look at this at the end of the round when he really opens it up. Stiff, straight left. Just like stepping to his right to turn his opponents after he splits the jab, Manny also has the ability to step to his left in order to mix up his escape options and remain unpredictable. Since stepping towards the right hand of the orthodox opponent is dangerous, Pacquiao instinctively rolls under their possible right hand counter as he steps to his left, and this is defensive responsibility. So here we see Pacquiao split the jab of Timothy Bradley and roll out to his left. Even though Bradley doesn't throw a counter, Pacquiao is ready for it just in case. He doesn't need to see the punch coming. He already understands that return fire is likely coming, and he rolls under the most likely counter automatically. After splitting the jab with his left hand, Pacquiao understands that he must protect himself from counters. By having the ability to step out in either direction, he keeps his opponents confused as to which direction he'll go next, and this greatly reduces the chance he will get countered. Pacquiao has displayed time and time again that he understands the effectiveness of constantly changing the angle from which you enter and exit in exchange. This makes him very difficult to counter. And so I could show you guys hours upon hours of Manny Pacquiao splitting the jab with his straight left hand as he's one of the best at doing it. But the point I want to get across is that he does this to expertly neutralize his opponent's jab. See what you must understand is that the jab is widely known as the most important punch in boxing. However, if you get countered every time you throw the jab, it makes you hesitate to throw the jab. But the thing is, you won't beat Manny Pacquiao without establishing an effective jab. But every time the jab comes, Pacquiao counters it, and so the cycle continues. And you know, a lot of the time, casual boxing fans describe Manny Pacquiao as some kind of brawler, and this is absolutely disrespectful. You know, it's completely not true. This is uh, evidence of that. And Pacquiao's giving him some fakes, and what can I do? Evens up the knockdown count as he puts Marquez on the canvas. 
So when it comes to counter punching, there are essentially three different points in time in which you can counter your opponent's punch. You can counter before your opponent's punch, during the punch, and after the punch. Splitting the jab is an example of how Manny Pacquiao uses his left hand to counter it during his opponent's punch. Now let's take a look at how he uses his left hand to counter after his opponent's punch. I think he's got to change his game plan and stand there and use his... So this first example is what's known as a catch and shoot. Just like how it sounds, you execute it by blocking or parrying your opponent's punch and countering with your own punch. Here we see Manny parry Chris Algieri's jab with his right glove. Notice that Manny does not reach for Algieri's jab. He parries the punch as close to its intended target as possible so that he doesn't leave his, himself open. And there you see the straight left hand counter from Pacquiao after he parries the jab. And here against Floyd Mayweather, he parries the jab and then counters him with his straight left hand. And here against Margarito, Pacquiao sees the right hand to the body coming, so he catches it with his elbow and comes over the top with his left hand. Here we see Pacquiao shoot a jab inviting a counter from Timothy Bradley. And when Bradley counters, Manny's going to roll under the expected counter and counter Bradley's counter with his left hand. This is genius boxing. This knockdown of Timothy Bradley starts with this parry from Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao uses his arm as a shield to deflect Bradley's punch and counter with a left hand down the middle. And there you see the left hand counter after he deflects Bradley's left hand. And now Bradley is stunned and Pacquiao could go in for the kill. And last but not least, here Pacquiao pulls away from Brandon Rios' jab and comes back with a straight left hand as Rios is pulling his jab back. Now we're going to take a look at how Pacquiao is able to counter his opponents before they throw the punch. Sometimes Pacquiao's straight left counter is so quick, it appears as though he is leading. In the example I'm about to show you, he shoots the straight left at Miguel Cotto when he sees Cotto try to set up his own straight right hand. So now we're going to take a look at a signature technique of Manny Pacquiao, which is countering his opponents attempting to cut the ring off on him. What we're about to watch might possibly be the most impressive setup for a straight left hand that I've ever seen from Manny Pacquiao. The level of skill needed to successfully pull this off is so high, it probably went over the heads of most people watching it live. Here's the slower fighter with his feet and his hands. Um, he promised to test Manny's chin, but so far he really hasn't been able to. So what exactly did we just watch? Brandon Rios pressures Manny Pacquiao into the corner. Now in the corner, Pacquiao is going to look to circle out to his left and towards Rios' right hand. This goes against the conventional wisdom of moving away from the right hand of an orthodox opponent. But Pacquiao is setting a trap by inviting Rios to cut off the ring. Brandon Rios is going to take the bait and try to cut off the ring. Having been baited to cut off the ring, Rios anticipates Pacquiao to continue circling out to his left to get off the ropes. Knowing this, Pacquiao unexpectedly stops circling out the exact moment Rios moves too far to his right. Notice how Rios' foot is still in the air as he's stepping to cut off the ring. Pacquiao springs the trap by taking the outside angle, which allows an opening for his straight left hand to land. 
And there you see the straight left hand as Pacquiao takes the outside angle. Pacquiao's sudden and perfectly timed stop made Brandon Rios move too far to cut off the ring. This allowed Pacquiao to step to the outside of Rios' lead foot and land the straight left hand. As mentioned before, Pacquiao remains defensively responsible by stepping to his right after he lands the left hand, preventing a counter for Rios and also gets himself off the ropes. With his feet and his hands. Um, he promised to test Manny's chin, but so far he really has And I saw referee Sylvester Bainza raise up his uh, fist, meaning that a... Oh! Beautiful, beautiful left. Metones is almost out of his feet. He's in trouble. Metones is almost out of his feet. And so here we see a 16-year-old Manny Pacquiao set the same trap against Renato Mendonez back in 1995. After baiting Mendonez to cut off the ring, Pacquiao perfectly times his left hand as he steps to the outside of Mendonez's lead foot, establishing the dominant outside angle. And so we're going to see Pacquiao step out to his left, baiting Mendonez to cut off the ring. And just like he did against Brandon Rios, Manny stops circling out to his left just as Mendonez expects further movement. This causes Mendonez to move too far to cut the ring, giving Manny an easy path to take the outside angle and line up this devastating left hand. And so I just want to add that the timing needed to do this is extremely difficult. Even though you can't see the feet at this angle, Pacquiao springs the trap and catches both Rios and Mendona's mid-step. This use of angles and timing puts a smile on my face every time I see it. Manny Pacquiao's left hand is such a dangerous weapon due to his ability to alter or change the trajectory midway through the punch. He often loops the punch when you expect the straight and shoots the straight when you expect him to loop the punch. So here you see him loop the left hand around Antonio Margarito's right glove. And here against Timothy Bradley, we're going to see Pacquiao loop the straight left hand around the defense by changing the trajectory of the punch. Abajo no aguanta, está cansado. Tu golpe se aguanta. Abajo no aguanta. Fíjate, ¿por dónde le ha metido? Es que no es un fallo, es que le ha tirado donde iba a estar. Le haya sorprendido la And of course, one of the things that makes Pacquiao so special is his ability to land that left hand from positions that you wouldn't expect him to, and he does so with power as well. So that was everything I wanted to say about Pacquiao's left hand. Now I'm going to break down the two things Pacquiao is most known for. His use of angles and his combination punching. The use of angles in boxing is widely understood as a key skill to utilize if you want to be successful in the ring. Angles are set up by the footwork of the fighter in question and is used to both create openings on your opponent and to take away the openings on yourself. He's a precise puncher. And now we're seeing some of that speed, though, of Pacquiao beginning to make a little bit of a difference for him. You're right, Rich. I think he had to adjust to the strength of Cotto, and he had to realize that he could hang in there. This is a red-hot round, guys. Cotto's had his moments. He's going southpaw. Covers up. And the thing about Pacquiao's use of angles is that it is what makes his combination punching so effective. He understands the concept of changing your position in order to force your opponent to change theirs. Watch here as Pacquiao launches this combination on Kodo and immediately steps out to his right to change the angle and right away he throws another combination as Miguel Kodo turns. He remembers he's not paralyzed from the waist down and actually steps, uses his legs to change the angle to not only create a new angle of an attack on Kodo but to also get away from Kodo's counterattack. Watch as Pacquiao takes Margarito to the left, to the inside angle. And then right on the dime, he's going to change the angle and then line up that left hand, all while turning Margarito and forcing him to adjust before he could counter. Boatload for Manny Pacquiao to handle. 
Pacquiao turning, turning back. Perfect. And a nice textbook. body shot by Pacquiao as well. Whoa, that's textbook. But even if you want to get into a slugfest with him, Cotto wants to make it a war. So here we see Pacquiao step to the outside of Miguel Cotto and pivot around him, change the angle. And so he attacks Miguel Cotto as soon as he turns. And so before I, I show more examples, I want to talk about how the foot position is used to establish angles in boxing. The lead foot is used to establish your actual position as well as your line of attack, which is why you should aim your lead foot at the central mass of your opponent. And your trailing foot is used to establish your angle of attack. So you must combine both your lead foot and your trailing foot positions to establish dominant positions from which you can control the fight from. And then we see him establish a new angle using his trailing foot. And with Pacquiao's lead foot already positioned for an attack, he's able to completely change the angle by pivoting his trailing foot around his lead foot. This establishes a new angle of attack, and Miguel Cotto must make a positional adjustment to defend himself. And so Pacquiao is able to unleash another combination as Miguel Cotto changes his position. But notice how ch by changing the angle, Pacquiao doesn't allow Cotto to punch back because he simply isn't in front of him anymore. Cotto is forced to turn and Pacquiao unleashes another combination on him. Manny Pacquiao understands the effectiveness of establishing angles to force positional adjustments from his opponents. And while they're adjusting, he's always punching. Even though moving towards the right hand of the orthodox opponent goes against conventional wisdom, Pacquiao pivots to his left to establish an inside angle when his opponent doesn't allow him to take the dominant outside angle. By pivoting to his left, it allows an angle for his left hand to land. Notice here how Pacquiao takes Marquez to the left. By doing so, it baits out the right hand from Marquez. And notice how Pacquiao is able to counter by pivoting to his left so that he could land that left hand. Most important thing to me is to see how effective Mark Hayes has been landing. Most important thing to me is to see how effective Mark Hayes has been landing. Most important thing to me is to see how effective Mark Hayes has been landing. And the big shot. He, he's not boxing his way in. Right. He's not putting himself in the position. And as I previously mentioned, Manny's use of angles is exactly what makes his combination punching so effective. Once he gets Bradley into a high guard along the ropes, he steps his trailing foot to the left to essentially take a side angle and attack Bradley from his flanks. And then we see Pacquiao unleash this 10 punch combination on Timothy Bradley. And notice that the punches are still getting through his defense. This is because he stepped to the outside. And keep in mind that the high guard is designed to block punches coming directly at you. Since Pacquiao stepped over to the side and changed the angle, his punches were coming from around and between Timothy Bradley's high guard, rendering it e useless. Due to Manny Pacquiao's incredible hand speed, his opponents often find themselves relying on a high guard. However, Pacquiao's use of angles renders their high guard useless. This is what makes Manny Pacquiao one of the greatest offensive fighters of his era. He's not boxing his way in. Really? He's not putting himself in the position. Pacquiao looking really strong. And that's what Manny has to try to catch. Well, the he's... best way to stay on your feet is not to open up against Pacquiao. It's another onslaught. And in these examples against Joshua Claudi, we notice that Pacquiao, mid combination, will step over to his left to open up that left hand. He changes the angle on Claudi, who's in a very high and tight guard, and by stepping around him, he's able to get the opening so that the left hand could land around Joshua Claudi's high guard. Okay, so now we're going to talk about another one of Manny Pacquiao's signature traps. After Pacquiao lands a flurry on his opponents along the ropes, he often sets a trap to do even more damage than if he kept attacking. 
Usually Pacquiao's opponents will immediately want to get him back for the flurry, so Manny will purposely back off and look to land a devastating counter as his opponents try to fight back. That left hand. Now he's back orthodox. And he can switch because he's a natural shot. Oh, nice, nice movement from Polo to avoid the oh! shot. He's down again. Combination puts him down. So we see Manny Pacquiao tag Miguel Cotto along the ropes. So he lands a couple of flurries, and then Cotto's going to want to get him back right away. So Manny Pacquiao's going to push off and give him the space to allow Cotto to get impatient. And then Cotto pays the price after getting sloppy. And down he goes from that beautiful left uppercut from Manny Pacquiao. And this is what happens when you fall for this trap. When Manny Pacquiao flurries on you, he'll often back up and then look to counter you when it looks like he's taking a break. So oftentimes his opponents get impatient and then they make a mistake and end up getting countered and then the cycle continues. As you see Pacquiao will flurry on you again, back off again and land another counter. Strong and so sturdy as compared to Morales. Even though Morales is landing, he seems to be still uncoordinated as compared to down goes Morales on a Pacquiao right hand. So we see Pacquiao split the jab of Eric Morales. And he steps out to the side and Morales is going to want to get him back. So he steps forward and blitzes at him. But this is where he makes the mistake. Pacquiao is going to step back and extend his right hand right here to create the space needed to counter him. And by simultaneously stepping back and extending his lead hand, Pacquiao creates the space needed to escape Morales' sloppy onslaught, giving him a chance to land a counter. The lead hand is used to pinpoint Morales' head and also momentarily blocks his vision so that he doesn't see the left hand coming. And so extending your lead hand is another way of asking yourself, am I enraged to punch? And there we see the beautiful left hook land as Pacquiao catches Morales coming in. Okay, so now I want to talk about Manny Pacquiao's use of feints. Manny Pacquiao's use of feints is unique in the fact that he doesn't only use his gloves to feint his opponent. He often uses movement from his shoulders, head, torso, and even uses his footwork as feints. Pacquiao's fr constant flirtation with distance via in and out movement keeps his opponents confused as to when he's going to punch and when he's even in punching range or not. And feinting is incredibly important to use in boxing because it keeps you unpredictable. By utilizing feints, you can bait your opponent to counter the punch they thought was coming. This can give you a counter-punching opportunity for yourself. And feinting also allows you to gauge how your opponent reacts to certain situations, which you can then capitalize on later. And I just want to say that Pacquiao has the best use of feints I've seen since Roberto Duran. But he's not doing it. Or Pacquiao's not letting him do it if he wants to do it. Look at that. What is that? But he's not doing it. Or Pacquiao's not letting him do it if he wants to do it. Look at that. What is that? So we see Pacquiao faint Timothy Bradley with the right hand. He notices that Bradley's trying to counter him with his right hand. Pacquiao is going to notice that Bradley is looking for counters now. So he's going to really try to bait out that straight right hand counter. After he parries Bradley's jab here, he's going to faint his left hand this time. Bradley's going to think that Pacquiao already committed to that left hand. He's going to try to counter it, but the straight left hand from Pacquiao never came and Bradley's face says it all. You see, you can really bait out somebody's punch by fainting and get them to miss and eventually get tired the way Bradley did in this fight. And the left hand, and it drops Mosley, just like that. From Manny Pacquiao. Sets it up with a jab and a feint and lands in a good straight left hand. And that punch hurt Shane Mosley. It wasn't just a knockdown that sent him down. Using the jab and the straight left hand, a classic combination. And 
Here we see Manny use a feint to manipulate the guard of Shane Mosley and find an opening on him. So this is what he's going to do. He's going to give a very subtle feint right here. He's going to feint a level change, which makes Shane Mosley think that he's going to the body. And this very subtle feint is going to manipulate Shane Mosley's guard. And from there, he's going to find the opening up top and unleash this one, two, which sends a very intelligent veteran like Shane Mosley down to the canvas. Pacquiao finds a lot of success manipulating the defense of his opponents with a signature feint. By breaking his rhythm with a feint to the body, his opponents try to defend the punch coming to the body, and as they do that, Pacquiao shoots his 1-2 combination to the exposed chin of his opponents. Proto bites down with more power shots. Well, in the lights of Zab Judah and the lights of Shane Mosley. Well, let's not make uh, Pacquiao... And I just want to emphasize that a key component of feinting is the art of setting a rhythm and suddenly breaking that rhythm to keep your opponent from timing your punches. Watch here as Manny bounces in and out to establish a rhythm and break that rhythm with a stutter step to prevent Timothy Bradley from timing him coming in. And we see Manny establishes that rhythm with that bounce step and there he feints with his feet causing Timothy Bradley to stay still on the ropes and is able to unleash that combination on him. And Bradley's simply unable to find the counter because he cannot tie Manny coming in. Manny see that stutter step again and Bradley tries the counter, but Manny simply isn't there because it was simply just a feint. He bounces again and look, Bradley's unable to uh, find the counter because Manny was able to change his rhythm there. Absolutely beautiful boxing from Manny. And you see how Bradley is pretty much stuck in the corner looking for those counters, but you, it's impossible to find them. Or he baits Manny to come in, and then Manny's going to stutter step again. Bradley's going to miss with a left hook, and then Manny's going to pepper him again with more punches. Okay, so let's go over what we just saw. Pacquiao feints with his right hand and left shoulder to draw a response from Bradley. Notice how Pacquiao also controls the space between himself and Bradley by probing with his lead hand. Bradley's response is to duck down to avoid the one-two he thought Pacquiao was going to throw. Ducking down is a very effective defensive tactic, but the weakness of it is that you can't do anything else without first coming back up to your boxing stance. Now that Bradley has nowhere to go except up, Pacquiao can freely launch a real attack now. But first we notice that Pacquiao takes a bounce step back before launching his attack on Timothy Bradley. This is used to gain time on Bradley and also gives him the space needed to prevent Bradley from clinching him. I mentioned that you can't do anything besides return to your boxing stance after ducking down at the waist. The one option that you do have is to smother or clinch your opponent, and Pacquiao's bounce step completely takes this option away from Bradley. And there you see him launch the 1-2-1 one, one that is most famous for and catches Bradley because he has no option but to go up. So that was everything I want to say about Manny Pacquiao's feints. Now I want to talk about his distance management. And so the conventional wisdom for a smaller fighter to be a longer fighter is for the smaller fighter to get into close range where the shorter limbs are more effective than longer limbs. And I've always felt that this was too general of a strategy for every fighter to follow because you're simply asking them to work harder than they need to. Manny Pacquiao, as a former flyweight, is usually smaller than his opponents at welterweight and he takes a different strategy from this conventional wisdom. And so Pacquiao does the opposite of the conventional wisdom and keeps his distance from longer fighters, making the longer fighter overextend and negate his own reach advantage. 
See in this picture how Floyd Mayweather, who has a much longer reach than Manny Pacquiao, cannot reach him at this position. We know that Mayweather likes to measure his distance with his lead hand, and we see he is out of range at this position. This means Manny Pacquiao is even further from his punching range. So what is Manny going to do? He must get his respect. He must know that if he makes a mistake, he's going to be hurt. And I think that's what... Okay, so let's watch that clip. So we see that Manny Pacquiao is outside of Floyd Mayweather's reach because you can't reach him when it's fully extended. And we notice here that Manny Pacquiao also takes a simultaneous step back to maintain that distance, showing that he wants to remain out of Floyd Mayweather's distance. And so Floyd Mayweather comes in, takes another step, and Manny Pacquiao takes another step back. And we notice that by taking a step back, he makes Floyd Mayweather overextend himself. Manny Pacquiao lands an easy left-hand counter over the top. And watch here how Pacquiao steps back at an angle to make Eric Morales overextend himself. Okay, so now I'm going to show you examples of how Manny Pacquiao uses his right hand or his lead hand in his fights, namely by controlling his opponent, setting up his left hand, and of course his right hook. Notice in the sequence Pacquiao jabs and keeps his lead hand extended to control Bradley's head momentarily, causing Bradley to wildly miss his counter uppercut. It gets wet, and it's a little slippery out there in some spots. Well, we had some ice previously in that, uh, down there, and I don't know if they, they got away in that but, uh, quick enough, but it definitely made it possible. Pacquiao lands a right hook and Bradley ducks down to avoid the left hand. Instead of retracting the left hand that missed and allowing Timothy Bradley to chin check him, you know, counter him, Pacquiao uses this opportunity to grab a hold of Bradley's head, thwarting any possible counter. It's because you must control your opponents. The best fighters don't allow their opponents to capitalize on their mistakes. Watch here as Pacquiao sticks his lead hand in Timothy Bradley's face. This gives Bradley something to think about, as well as blocks his vision and it controls the space between them very effortlessly. Manny Pacquiao's right hook is one of his most versatile weapons. He can lead with it to catch opponents coming in, use it as a counter to the jab, use it to catch opponents moving away from his straight left hand, and he can also sneak it into his combinations. In this fight, and, and the other guy's a, such a terrific boxer. In the last fight, a lot of people accused him of fading. Pacquiao counters the orthodox jab by slipping to the inside and coming over the top of the jab. The reason the right hook from the southpaw works so well as a counter to the jab is because it loops around the same side that the jabbing hand of the orthodox opponent is supposed to be protecting. Simply put, there's no hand on that side to protect them, and that's why the hook works so well. Against the orthodox jab, Pacquiao has the ability to slip onto the inside and counter with the right hook, or he could slip to the outside and counter you with a straight left hand. The point is, he has multiple weapons to counter the orthodox opponent's jab. As mentioned before, the lead right hook from the southpaw is an excellent weapon to stop opponents from walking right into your space because it comes from the blind side of the orthodox fighter. Manny's right hook is also good for punishing opponents moving away from his left hand. Cut body as both men are, as you would expect these consummate professionals to be. Six-time world champion Manny Pacquiao. The 
profile coming in was that Pacquiao was not the file coming in was that Pacquiao was coming in was that Pacquiao was Pacquiao's true secret weapon is his ability to sneak in a right hand after his 1-2 combination. He's able to generate power on that last right hand because he performs a Dempsey shift into the punch. By shifting, he also continues his forward momentum and catches opponents off guard by how much distance he's able to cover with this combination. All right, so we're gonna take a look at this combination from Manny Pacquiao. So he's gonna throw a range finding jab and follow that up with a left hand to the body to lower the guard of his opponent. And then the right hand that the orthodox opponent never sees coming because it comes from the blind side. And it also covers a lot of distance because Pacquiao shifted into it. And this combination is not to be underestimated. I've been hit by this combination from Southpaw opponents and uh, it's a very sneaky and effective tactic. Let's watch Pacquiao catch Marquez with the right hand as he throws his left hand and then shifts and sneaks in that right hand at close range and Marquez is wobbled by that right hand. And watch again as Pacquiao in their third fight against Marquez, he throws the left hand and the right hand again and watch him step out to his right in order to uh, move over to safety. Watch again, he's got to throw the straight left shift through the right hand and then now that has an orthodox stance is going to step out to his right to get back into his southpaw stance absolutely beautiful more precision yep. lands a hard body shot but ricky isn't moving his head too much still uh, his head is still right And lastly, Pacquiao uses his right hand as a distraction to set up his powerful left hand. This highlight reel knockout of Ricky Hatton was set up by this right hand that momentarily occupies Hatton while Pacquiao prepares a left hand lullaby. And then Manny Pacquiao's left hand puts Ricky Hatton to sleep and Pacquiao smartly exits the scene of the crime before the cops have time to arrive. All right, and that's going to be the end of the video. Thank you to everybody who watched the video, and thank you to everybody who watches my videos in general. I definitely had a lot of fun making this, and I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this just as much as I did making it. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys could leave a like, uh, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel, and definitely share this video around with those who you think it would enjoy this video. I really worked hard on this, and it's been in the works for a few months at this point, so I really appreciate it if you could share it around, get as many views as possible, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. So I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you all for watching. When she burning, I'ma chill for a minute Cause ain't no loving good enough to get burned while I'm a bennin' yeah. And that's real and real deal, holy feel And now you hook up and hoes know how I feel Well if it's good enough to get off a proper chunk I take a small piece of some of that funky stuff It's like this and like that and like this and uh It's like that and like this and like that and uh It's like this and like that and like this and uh